Hi, uh, this is T with Sushmita. Here we talk with T. Uh, let me first give you a little introduction about whom I am talking today. The youngest mountaineer in the world and first Indian to climb the seven highest peaks as well as the seven highest volcanic peaks in seven continent. That kinds of makes it a Guinness World Record. He's the only fifth Indian civilian to climb all the seven highest peaks in each continent. He has also skied to the last degree to South Pole, which is a distance of about 111 kilometer. A certified mountaineer from the Himalayan Mountaineering Institute, Darjeeling, a motivational speaker, environmentalist, and president of founder of Abeto, A Better Tomorrow. That is Satyadi uh, Sattaru. Welcome, Satya, to my tea talk. Hi. Thank you for your time. It's a pleasure. Uh, <laughs> cheers. Oh, cheers. Great. Uh, so I have heard the uh, I have heard about Queen B. I never heard about Queen T. Okay. <laughs> okay Queen T. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. You are the tea artist of India, so I, I like. Um, I'm very. Proud to have an interaction with you. Thank you so much. It's more like a fangirl moment for me. So let's continue with that. <laughs> All right. Um, so let me let me let me start my first question by making a quotation. You know, I'm going to read out a quotation. Young people in India should not simply import the unhappiness of the West, but be inspired by their own amazing young people like Satyaru. How does it feel when someone like Sir Robert Swan comments on your achievements? It was uh, uh, like for me, it was the fan moment when I met uh, Sir Robert Swan in Antarctica, and um, mm -hmm. uh, he heard my story, and he made me talk for more than three four hours, uh, and uh, right at Antarctica in in his tent, and um, uh, he he is a great inspiration. And uh, uh, to be honest, that today uh, I have chosen my path as a leadership uh, trainer, as a uh, motivational speaker, everything is because I was so inspired by him and uh, he showed me the direction. So yeah, when it comes from a legend like uh, Sir Robert Swan, who has uh, skied both the poles and the first person uh, to do so in the world, uh, yeah. definitely it's a cloud number nine <laughs> for me. Yeah, great. I know getting something, someone like that, making comments like this about you and it must be a real motivation for your future. Great. Uh, so seven summits, seven volcanic summits, last mile to South Pole. What motivates you really to keep doing all these things? Can you share some of your experiences? Yeah, uh, uh, you know, this is something uh, which I never thought I could do. And that's why it's a big high for me. Which otherwise, who would think that uh, uh, a kid from a small town uh, uh, who has not born in uh, with a uh, silver spoon, having asthma, who couldn't even run 100 meters uh, yeah. without a puff from the inhaler. And I only get surprised sometimes uh, looking back and uh, thinking that how, how the hell did I do all these seven summits, seven volcanic summits, South Pole and uh, the North Pole is coming. So, uh, uh, yeah, I, 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 I feel privileged uh, uh, about the whole journey because the journey wasn't easy and it's still tough. <laughs> but uh, what, what, what happened was this over the, over the years, a belief system got uh, implanted in me, which is uh, the belief system called that, yes, I can. So no matter mm -hmm. what the situation is, uh, no matter what the VUCA world is, with so much volatility, so much uh, uh, uncertainty, uh, so much ambiguity and complexity in this world that has to offer, still we can glide through uh, because of this journey so, uh, uh, that I have gone through. And, um, you know, uh, the, the, uh, it all started with a dream. And uh, then I realized that everybody offers dreams. Even I have some other dreams. But why this dream? Maybe mm. it was the commitment towards the dream that uh, became so much an obsession that uh, yeah. like, it, it, it keeps on pushing me, pushing me. And uh, no matter what the uh, uh, difficulties are, no matter 
like bring a mountain i will <laughs> cross it bring a ditch i will jump it uh, to achieve that like yeah? so maybe uh, that obsession uh, is is what the driving force for me yeah mm-hmm. great wonderful so any major experience one or two that you want to share some very interesting experience or scary experience or like any kind of experience that you could share so uh, no, of course mount everest is itself uh, a gold mine for experiences like that uh, uh, first time you had to come back because of that major yes. earthquake that happened here yeah. yes in 2015 when we were almost there and uh, you know these mountain expeditions are very very costly especially when it is in india uh, we don't get uh, it's not so popular uh, an adventure sport like um, a cricket or football like you know so that becomes a yeah. quite, quite a bit challenge uh, to uh-huh. arrange the money now imagine when i somehow arrange the money uh, got some sponsorship from manipal then got do some crowdfunding and uh, gave all my savings and then just the dream was about to unfold you know and i i, I was so happy that i am going towards my dream and uh, the dream mountain a dream i saw in 2010 after seeing mount everest mm-hmm. in front of me and then when i'm just yeah. there near the base camp suddenly this earthquake happened in nepal in 2015 yeah. yeah and just after the earthquake there was an avalanche in yes. base camp yeah more than 10000 people died in nepal in that avalanche in in that mm-hmm. earthquake and 21 people died 21 mountaineers died in the base camp and yes. the expedition got cancelled and all the money was lost and the money which was not mine alone and like the money of the sponsors money of people and like i was devastated my dreams were like you know it's burned and broken and crushed like you know yes. so from there uh, to like you know bounce back it was it was itself quite a challenge and uh, when you see dead bodies lying there wrapped in plastic and you still think of your dream uh, it's very mm-hmm. selfish that time but then you get some realization uh thinking that and all but out of all these uh, mount everest also gave me uh, some amazing amazing uh views which i probably you know once i fell down in a crevasse <laughs> and while i was hanging and uh, wow. uh while i was hanging and there was no one like you know i was hanging for almost uh, half an hour and mm. it was an abyss like you know, i couldn't even see how deep it was uh. but that moment which should be very panicky it calmed me down seeing the surrounding in the crevasse and it was a kind of um, uh, like a snake you know and it's a crack which has gone a kilometer this side a kilometer this side like you know and wow. some places it is covered fully some places there are translucent eyes so huh. the sun is coming and some places directly it is open like you know so inside the it's like a darkness and then some light and some diffused light and the the eyes became so blue like you know mm. I, i can't explain what blue it is like you know when uh, uh, so i totally forgot that i was hanging and that i could <laughs> die any moment oh right? my god and uh, yeah. uh, it just took me to a different world so i have never seen yeah. what heaven is but i can mm. guess what heavenly experience is like you know so so that is one one such uh, experience that i can yeah. vividly uh, like you know remember and i can, I, i always get those goosebumps even on the mm. day of uh, summiting mount everest it was a buddha purnima night and mm. uh, that time like it was a lot of pressure right you know you were climbing everest and then you go for the last mile you know just going mm. going going and you, for, you forget to look around also because you're so focused <laughs> and you have to go you have your oxygen cylinders will be like 4 hour 6 hours, hours each so you have to be calculative mm. and thinking like you know going 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 so when i reached the half of mount everest which is the balcony you know it's the half mm. almost half like at 8400 meter mm. currently i just looked around and the moonlight can be so bright i had no idea and since there is no pollution there is like and it is so like it is almost 8 and 1/2 kilometers above the sea level right mm. you are 8 and 1/2 kilometer closer to the moon yeah so beautiful and the whole place is like washed with the moonlit moonlight. white moonlight yeah. and that yeah. the other side uh, we can see all the tibet mountains which are very small small mountain this side mm. all the mountains that were so big appearing like mole hills 
such a beautiful uh, and i wanted to capture i took out my camera but uh, you know at everest you don't carry heavy cameras and all because one gram seems to be like 10 kg is like you know there so yeah. the camera couldn't capture properly and what i did mm-hmm. was i captured in the best camera in the world that is our eyes mm-hmm. you know and right. i yeah. i just saw the whole thing and i like you know at any point of time whenever i want i can retrieve that moment and i can just go there like you know as a like um yeah. to re- retrieve that moment so yeah these are some amazing amazing experiences uh, fond memories i can say mm-hmm. like you know though yeah. uh, so nothing nice happened <laughs> yeah no i mean uh, you are giving me very wonderful experiences even though you are in a very dangerous situation particularly the one the first one that you were talking about almost hanging you yeah. know into the tapis but you are still so positive and looking into the good side of it the beautiful side of it i think that's really remarkable what you are telling me uh, do i have a choice <laughs> <laughs> you go on for has but mm-hmm. not everybody looks at life like that Yeah. I think that's what makes you a great motivational speaker. That brings takes me to the next question, of course. So you are a very sought after motivational speaker, and like you are very busy with your schedule. I've been trying to reach you for the last couple of weeks, and you have been doing so many things, sitting at home in Calcutta. So tell me some of your very memorable experiences while doing, you know, while giving your motivational talks. You have you have been traveled across the globe to give motivational. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, in Latin America, in Europe, in you know, in uh, Asia. So, any memorable incidents while doing this? Yeah, it was a great honor to uh, speak at the ASEAN headquarters, and uh, my mm-hmm. climb. It was uh, like on the way to my climb to Papua New Guinea uh, there. So, they gave the honor of making that climb as a commemorative climb to mark the 50th anniversary of ASEAN. and the 25th anniversary of uh, india and asian uh, uh, collaboration so uh, speaking in front of uh, so many national with dignitaries uh, and diplomatic diplomats actually uh, mm. i felt really honored being an indian and uh, mm. and uh, when i went to uh, cern uh, in geneva uh, and when yes. the scientists and like you know uh, were listening to me and like uh, i i i was uh, transported to a different uh, uh like you know place all together because mm. in, and they had given me a hall which is a very coveted hall and that hall is the place where two days back the uh, higgs boson particle uh, that they could yeah, pa- yeah, find the they they yeah. do those kind of conferences in that particular hall so giving a speech there in front of the world class the top notch scientists in the world uh, i think um, mm-hmm. uh, i i felt so humbled and so grateful Uh, like you know mm. and then i had given talks uh, for um, leader, leader senior leadership team for enter south america tcs uh, so they are also like just after i claim came from the climb uh, and met the world mm. record and i gave the talk so those are uh, very special moments for me but mm. the most special ones are when i go and talk to the kids of the underprivileged schools because i see one thing mm. in their eyes their eyes litter just like the, the like you know the, the, it's like stars like you know when and i i can see the dreams in their eyes and uh, in future i want to work more and more with them uh, because uh, uh, when you don't get something you now then the crave is more but when you get yeah. everything you don't get the you don't uh, value it uh, so yeah. i value all this mountaineering so much because i never thought i could do it right so mm-hmm. that has become my motto and uh, with everyone's uh, blessings i'm sure that uh, i'll be able to work uh, more to with them great great i think uh, what you are doing is great i wish you all the best with that now let me come back to tea yes uh, are you drinking some tea what is your favorite tea what is stuff tell me something about your tea i know yeah if if i was climbing hiking walking which i cannot do from the you know to save my life but if i would do that uh perhaps i'll carry my tea and i would like to take a break tea break something happens with you like do you do you drink tea what is your favorite tea so uh like you know darjeeling is a place where which uh, always attracted us because our family friend was there and every winter we used to go there and oh, okay. uh, later on i did my mountaineering course also from darjeeling right okay. so near darjeeling yes. there is a place called mokai bari 
and uh, he is very famous exactly. there and we have, yeah. uh, we get those teas uh, so my family friend uh, they send those tea whenever they come they also bring that tea and all so we have developed a taste for that but mm. uh, i am an explorer so i i try any kind of tea anywhere like you know and uh, uh, even something called uh, matte which is uh, almost ah, like tea that- but put it in yeah, hot water and then you drink with that yeah yeah so uh, yeah. but then i remember very vividly or in fact in mountains uh, we have to drink a lot of water now yeah. normal water you don't feel like drinking okay hot water mm-hmm. like who will drink the hot water so we always make tea and keep it in the flask and we keep yeah. on sipping and i don't know uh, the time i i mean mountains 7 to 8 hours we keep drinking tea <laughs> <laughs> mm. you know and we, that frequency we don't drink here and um, mm. uh, even in antarctica the uh, like you know we used to prepare the tea and keep it in flask and always drink 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 but the most mm. vivid moment was when i was coming back from summiting everest and i am um, almost reaching to the camp 4 then i was sitting and next to me there was a mountaineer from madhya pradesh uh, he mm. and like you know the water was over by the time and because we take only 1 liter water uh, things like you know and then i saw that he is sipping some something like you know and i was like looking at him and i can't tell also like you know at that altitude you can't even ask anything from anyone unless it's a real necessity kind of thing and he looked at me and then he told and since we have oxygen mask we can't even speak much so he just put the mask and drinking and putting it back then he looked at me and told what <laughs> and yeah <laughs> it was the best tea in my life ever because oh. that was like that that was like gave me a life <laughs> it was the, everything was like choked and cold and everything and then you get hot and it was uh, of course when we drink tea there we put lot of sugar and all because we need to get energy and all but uh, i don't know how he made the tea but that was one of its kind of tea uh, and mm. it's not in the taste bud it's in the mind now <laughs> yeah yeah great to know that you know tea made that difference after you climbed uh, mount everest wonderful story great so now what um, uh, we are at the last segment so this is what i call five question for you uh, this is where you give very short answers okay one word one sentence uh, things like that so we we'll start great um a historic personality who motivates you a uh, two in fact shackleton and mallory okay all right so i understand the second the second person who is the first one shackleton is uh, considered to be one of the best uh, uh people leader and he was a polar explorer antarctica and uh, he never succeeded in whatever he aimed to do uh but he is considered to be the most successful person in antarctica because okay. his success whatever he has set for himself was so huge even if he failed mm. that was also a record like you know so i think okay. everybody should uh, whoever is watching just search shackleton and you'll be amazed okay. and I, I, i i'm sure they will do that i will also do it myself after this yes great uh, okay so my next question is if hollywood makes a movie about you who you want to see starring as you me <laughs> you okay <laughs> the fool <laughs> i was expecting that answer yeah i would also love to see you not starring as you also great next question is um, an advice you would give to young indian one advice that you would like to give to young indians yes uh, so dream dream big so and just dreaming big won't help you have to chase your dreams and no matter what just follow it and do whatever you do but you have to achieve that and make it such an obsession that you and your dreams are not two different entities but you become mm. the dream you know mm. and when you become the dream nothing can stop you so keep dreaming great. and chase your dreams great wonderful wonderful uh what is your next big plan uh my plan was to go to north pole on 1st april this was the second time i planned and uh, last time i had to come back 
uh, because of uh, problems between Russia and Ukraine. This time, COVID uh, wanted me to stay back at Kolkata. <laughs> but uh, maybe next year, um, I'm going to go for that kill. And uh, even I have planned for November Amadablam. It's another beautiful mountain on the way to Everest. Uh, so if uh, international travel uh, becomes safer, then I'm preparing myself for that. Okay, great. I am sure it is going to happen very soon for you. Okay, so my last question to you, and I think this is going to be a question to a lot of your fans and followers. Uh, how would your woman of dream look like? Uh, good question. <laughs> I never gave it a thought, uh, but... Uh, I think Everest is that uh, dream woman, like you know, <laughs> and she made some magic to me, and that like you know, I can't even take that image in front of me uh, from uh, away from me. So like you know, and uh, maybe when I can take off Everest from my eyes, then I can search for one. Uh, but right oh, okay. now, if I if I remove that mountain, imagine let's do it, okay? If I remove that mountain right now from my eyes for a moment, and I just see you. <laughs> Wow. Okay, great. That's a very tough competition you know, for anybody. Great. Awesome. Okay. Uh, so it was great. Very, very nice talking to you, Satya. Yeah. Uh, keep motivating as you always do. Reach higher goals. Keep chasing your dreams as you have been doing. And I'm hoping that uh, in all your adventures, Steve will keep you helping as well and inspiring. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Bye.